Thank you for visiting experiencingliberty.com. If you ever visit the Kansas City area, stop by, we would love to meet you in person. Our prayer for you is for today's message to be a source of encouragement and hope, and quite possibly change your life. We're glad you're here. So here we are, uh, we're in the fourth week of this, uh, or the fifth week of this series called Bad Fruit, and uh, it's kind of taken from the fruit of the Spirit from the book of Galatians, which Paul has given us. Now let's see how smart you guys are. The first one was, uh, yeah, okay, love, love, okay? <laughs> Second one, oh my goodness, you people do not sound like you're full of joy, 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 love, joy, and then peace, a little better. And then last week was patience. So what we've got so far is love, joy, peace, patience. You know what this means then? We should all be, (laughs) this church should be indicative or characteristic of us just all going through life now filled with love, joy, peace, and patience. So how are we doing? Yeah. Okay. Well, we're going to keep going uh, to today, which is kindness, kindness. And uh, if you haven't noticed, um, with my speaking, maybe some of you who, who, are, who are new around here, um, usually what I share is just stuff God's slapping me upside the head about uh, with my own life. And today is no exception. So when you hear what I say and when, when I say things that, that may be a little uh, grappling with, with certain aspects of life or certain parts of scripture, this is only the overflow of what I'm dealing with in my own life. Um, Anybody who gets on the stage, don't don't think we're like sitting at the right hand of the Father or anything, because we're not. We're going through life just like you're going through life. We're learning just as you're learning. We're failing just like you're failing. We're struggling with life like you're failing, well, like you're struggling with it. And so when I share stuff today or or, or on any 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 message, it's really kind of this uh, autobiography, really, of of things that are going on in, in my own life. And especially to keep this up with with kindness. Because kindness for me, sometimes when I look at it, I look at it as something, yeah, it's important, but to me, just to be honest with you, sometimes it it kind of, in our society, in our culture, I kind of look at it as a little soft. I don't want to be looked at as a soft person. I want to be looked at as a strong person who who doesn't go into that mushy kind of touchy-feely kind of world. And that's kind of the concept I've had with kindness. It's not that I don't want to be kind, but yet I kind of back away sometimes because I stereotypically put kindness in a category that may not kind of work in in this cutthroat type of society that we live in. It's a dog-eat-dog world. You've got to be your own ambassador. You've got to be your own advocate. You've got to be the one looking out for yourself. And you can't show any kind of weakness or they're going to devour you. And so when I come to kindness, I know it's important. I mean, I I get it, but yet still, I have a tendency to kind of shy away from it a little bit. Maybe maybe you're like that, maybe you're not. I see people in our church who I look at them like, ah, man, you're a lot more kind than I am. I mean, I look at the way that there's there's just an outgrowth or an outpouring of this. And so when we get into kindness, again, some of these overlap because I think you'll hear some things that we talked about with love. But again, this is something that, is a fruit of the Spirit which should kind of come forth from who we are, the character of who we are as followers of Christ. Now, just because someone is kind doesn't mean they're a follower of Christ. They can be kind. They can be patient. They can be loving. They can be peace-filled to a point with not having a relationship with Christ. But just because you're kind doesn't mean you have a relationship with Christ. But because you have a relationship with Christ, you should be kind, so there's this kind of tension sometimes where we, we maybe look at these things and, and in terms of kindness and peace and love and joy, these are characteristics I hope that we're beginning to understand that the more we come closer to Christ, these fruits of the Spirit are simply an emulation of who he is. And the more we get closer, the more of these characteristics that are the characteristics of Christ become the characteristics of us. 
So the seeds that we've been talking about with planting seeds of love, joy, peace, and patience and kindness aren't necessarily trying to get you to be more loving, peaceful, patient, kind, and joyful, and all these things. Really, at the core of it, it's just simply trying to get us to be more like Christ. And the more we're like Christ, the more it comes out, just like we talk, sang in this song, from the inside out, not from the outside in. Well, we see this person... I better do a fruit now. I better be kind to this person. No, it should be the characteristic of who we are. So we're to the fifth one today, love, joy, peace, patience, and finally, kindness. And this is one of the social fruits. And this bears a definite social characteristic of it because our kindness usually is seen in our relationships and our interactions with others. So what is the meaning of kindness? Last week, we talked about patience, and it was easy to kind of do a little word study and break it down. This doesn't quite have the, those characteristics that last week did. But kindness, at its heart, is really from this passage. We can see a definition that kind of refers to a useful kindness, a useful kindness. So here's a working definition. It's in your bulletin as well. The term is described as a useful kindness, which refers to meeting real needs in God's way and timing. It's just not simply doing kind deeds. It's a usefulness. It's just not random. We talk a lot about random acts of kindness, and they're good in their own way. But the kind of kindness that Paul is referring to based on the word that he used is a specific, targeted kindness towards an individual that is useful, that meets a specific need in a specific way, in a specific time. And it's all surrounded by God, God's timing. Because remember, as a follower of Christ, I am now the hands and feet of Christ to people I interact with. Therefore, in order to be kind to someone, the more I'm in, in tune with God and what he wants for me and how he wants me to interact, then I'm able to meet specific needs useful needs in his way, his timing, and his methodology. Again, random kindness, random acts of kindness aren't bad. And I'm sure you've seen the YouTube videos where they're kind of staged. They're not really random. <laughs> it's not that I'm taking away from it, but this is a little different. This is something where this is just who we are. When we see someone in need or we see something that just requires kindness on our part, Because, again, of our connection with God, we are able to speak into it, to act in a way that is formulated by God's timing and God's way. Now, if that is the good fruit, if this is the good fruit of kindness, then what would the bad fruit be? Well, here's the definition of the bad fruit. The bad fruit would mean, it's coming up on the screen here, actions or attitudes characterized by moral corruption malice, harshness, cruelty, or indifference to others' needs. I mean, this is the opposite, correct? I mean, if God's way and God's way of doing things, meeting needs usefully or being kind in a useful way is over here, it makes sense then that the opposite, the bad fruit of what Paul is speaking about, would be actions or attitudes characterized by corruption, just meanness. In fact, if we want to take this and bring it down to one word, it would be cruelty, cruelty. So we have these fruits here. We have the fruit that Paul gives of kindness that refers to useful kindness. And then the opposite of this, the bad fruit is cruelty. Now, I don't want to, I don't, th- I don't characterize myself as cruel. I mean, maybe I'm not that kind, but I'm definitely not cruel I mean, maybe you're like me. Maybe, maybe you're not like uber kind, but at least, I mean, at least, right? You're not cruel. You're not characterized by cruel. Let's break this down a little bit more and see kind of how we, where we fit in here. So I want to give you five words that kind of, kind of give characteristics of, of kindness. The first one here is empathetic. If you're kind to someone, you're empathetic. Now, some of you who were listening when we talked about love, remember this is a core component of love, empathy. The ability to listen to someone so that you understand where they're coming from. Kindness takes that into account. 
It's the ability to look at someone, interact with someone, to put yourself in their shoes, to be able to understand the hurt, the pain, the needs, what is going on in their life. In other words, altruistic. We don't use that word a lot, but that just simply means finding joy in helping someone. How much joy, how much, how much of a good feeling do we have when we are kind to someone? If you have this kindness that Paul is referring to, the altruism is going to be a characteristic of that in your life. How about gentleness? Oh my gosh, if there's a soft word, this is it. Gentle. It's like petting a little puppy dog or a little kitten. You know, in, in our society, gentleness is not really, I would say it's not really brought up to where it's, it's looked at in positive ways per se. I mean, maybe in some cases, but as a person, especially you guys out there, I mean, how would you like it if someone just, hey, you know, he's just a gentle fellow. I mean, maybe if you're like in a grandfather state, but for us of us, those of the rest of us who are in the prime of our lives, you know, gentleness, gentleness is kind of like, it, it's just not as desirable, you know, maybe, maybe, or maybe you're just kind of that person that's rough around the edges. You don't just have that smooth, gentle character. I do not feel like I'm a gentle person. I'll be, I'll be honest with you right now. I feel like when I talk to someone, it's like, boom, 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 boom. you know, it's just harsh, 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 harsh. But gentleness, the ability to softly speak into someone's life, to gently be kind to them. Next one, forgiving. It goes without saying, the ability to be kind by forgiving those who have hurt you. And then the last one is benevolent. Again, having this, this outward desire for people to provide for them, to give to them. So if these are the characteristics of, of kindness, I mean, you may pick a few here. You may, I'm pretty good with that one. Maybe not so good with that one, but, but overall, not too bad, right? All right, well, let's go to the other side, the cruelty, Okay. These are characteristics of cruelty. Instead of empathetic, you're just calloused. Callous. You're just kind of, oh my gosh, again, do we have to go through this? You're having another problem. I mean, it's just like, you're just callous to life. You're callous to everything. Somebody's, somebody's hurt, they're crying. Like, oh my gosh, we're going, yeah. That callous feeling. You know people who are like that. Maybe you're like that. Maybe I'm like that. You know, you just have this callousness about people who are hurting. And maybe it's because of your own life. Maybe it's because of your own background. Or maybe it's just because you're tired of it all. But callousness, instead of altruistic, you're sadistic. You kind of like when people go down. You kind of like when they fail or something. Now, again, I'll be honest. There are times when I look at this stuff and, you know, when someone I don't like goes down, I might crack a smile. <laughs> just being honest. I mean, it's like, if anybody deserves it, it's you, buddy. Yeah? But it's the sadistic kind of thing that kind of leads in there. Obviously, we already talked about being gentle or being brutal. Ah. You know, would you like to be a brute or you want to be gentle? Brutalness, where we just have this harshness, again, rough around the edges, just the way we talk, the way we act. It's just, there's coldness. There's not a... There's not a kindness about us. Rather than forgiving, which we all think we are, it's a lot easier, at least for me, to be a little vindictive. To be vindictive. Somebody does something to me instead of offering forgiveness. Oh, it's so much refreshing to be vindictive. Just to, just to you know, you did this to me, you know, you're gonna get it, you're gonna get it for me. Vindictive. And then rather than being benevolent, being malevolent, inflicting pain, inflicting harshness. Now, as you look at these five characteristics, you know, for me, I don't like necessarily just fit right in order with either side here. And if you look at these five things, you know, they're opposites. And if I were to put kind of a slider on, on this where you could kind of maneuver where you are, kind of where would you fit in on these things? Would you be more on the empathetic or more on calloused? Or maybe at times it's empathetic, but maybe at times it's callous. 
What about with sadistic or altruistic? Maybe altruistic at times, but overall, you know, uh, yeah, I don't know, maybe somewhere, somewhere in between there. Are you more of a gentle person or are you more of a brutal person? How do people describe you? That's a good way to understand where you are. Are you more forgiving or vindictive? Are you more benevolent or malevolent? You see, when you start to break it down a little bit, it gives you a little more clarity on where you fit in between these fruits, between kindness and cruelty. Now, my guess is, though, if you're like me, you're kind of somewhere in the middle here. You kind of fit somewhere in the middle. I mean, I am not, <laughs> I am not arrogant enough to get up here and tell you that I am empathetic, altruistic, gentle, forgiving, and benevolent. I am not sure, I am not sure that I have ever been described as those things. Because usually for me, I'm somewhere in the middle. And it depends on the context. It depends on the person. It depends on how I'm feeling about myself. It depends on what's been going on in my life. It depends on a lot of garbage that I have going on. And so sometimes if you'll hit me or if something will come up, you may get from me callousness or you might get some empathy. Sometimes you may come to me, depending again on the context, and sometimes I might be forgiving to you or sometimes I might be vindictive. Now, maybe you're not like me. Maybe you've got it all figured out. But for the rest of us, for the rest of us, usually we're falling somewhere in the middle. And here's the problem, all right? The problem is, is when I fall in the middle, because I am not cruel, because nobody's described me as callous, sadistic, um, malevolent, brutal, or vindictive, because I don't fall in that category, I have a tendency then to think I'm okay. Because I'm not mean to people, I'm okay. I may not be kind per se, I may not be oozing kindness, but hey, I am not cruel. And I don't think any of you are cruel, unless I've got you guys re, re, you know, figured out all wrong. I don't think in my interactions with the majority of you that you guys fall into a cruel category. But I also don't think that all of us, some of you probably, but all of us fit into this kindness category. We're somewhere in the middle. And if you're like me, again, confessing my stuff, if you're like me, I think I'm off the hook because I'm not cruel. I, I leave the kindness over here, but as long as I'm not in the real rotten bad fruit, then things are okay. But the problem is this place is called apathy. Apathy. I'm not cruel, but I'm not really kind either. I'm kind of in the middle somewhere. Doesn't really matter. I'm kind of indifferent. You're in pain. I'm not going to be mean to you, but I'm also not going to go on my way to be kind to you. You do something to me. I'm not going to be vindictive, but I'm also going to keep it in the back of my mind in case I need it someday. You see, we, we have a tendency when it comes to scripture to just make sure we're not eating the bad fruit. And if we're not in the bad fruit, the real bad fruit, then we're kind of over here in the middle somewhere and we think, oh, that, that's, that's good enough, right? It's good enough. But what does the Bible say about apathy? Let's focus on apathy for just a moment. What does the Bible say about apathy? Well, in the book of Revelation, it talks about apathy. And it talks about how God has this kind of view on apathy that there is neither hot nor cold. And in the book of Revelation, there's this lukewarm faith that the church has. And God comes to this church in the context of a church and says, listen, you're not, in our vernacular, you're not kind and you're not cruel. You're somewhere in the middle. But that doesn't work. And his response to this is that because you're neither hot nor cold, you're, either, you're neither kind nor cruel, I'm going to spit you out of my mouth. That's God's take on apathy when it came to churches. You go on another one. It talks about the Good Samaritan. Jesus told this story. And you see, as the, 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 Samar the, 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 the person was, was, the rich person was, was on 
the side of the road who had been beaten, all of these people just keep walking by. They're full of apathy, apathy, apathy. They want to pretend as though nothing's going on. They're not cruel. I mean, they're not kicking them down. They're not making fun of them. Hey, what happened to you, buddy? You know, they're not doing this stuff. But there's no kindness. And Jesus tells this story about how this Samaritan reached out and how the importance of the parable at this juncture in Jesus' teaching was that you're supposed to treat each other with kindness the way the Samaritan did. There was no room for apathy. It wasn't just that he wasn't cruel. Jesus was pushing, pushing, pushing for kindness. Another thing Jesus tells or another thing that's in scripture about the Bible with regards to apathy is it's a call to action. In the book of James, we'll hit this verse a little later again, but James talks about people who have faith and it says, faith without works is dead. In other words, if you're just existing, if we are just existing, if I'm just existing between these two points of kindness and cruelty, but I'm just content to just let it all go by, it says my faith is dead. Dead. So apathy, according to Jesus, according to God, and now according to Paul, is not really a good place to be. I would start to say that this is a form of, of a bad fruit that many of us are chomping down because we're not cruel. Goes on to say about warning against idleness in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. This passage just cracks me up at the end because it talks about how the idleness of our faith sometimes can get us, can, can, can just create this apathy. And then at the end of this passage, it says, if you're not busy, if you're not busy, in other words, if you're not doing something, you're gonna become a busy body. It's literally what it says. So if you're not moving towards kindness, Paul says again, the apathy will lead you towards probably a busy body and busy bodies have a tendency to move towards cruelty. And then one, one last thing about this is that this is a requirement of love, a requirement of love. First John chapter three. This is John now speaking, and he talks about people who are followers of Christ. And he says, if you are a person who sees a need, if someone doesn't have a coat and you have one and you, can't, and you don't give them to them, you don't take the steps to be kind, how does the love of God reside in you? You see, from this passage or these passages, there's a very distinct element that is given to us as followers of Christ that we cannot exist. I mean, we can, but as followers of Christ, we should not be existing in an apathetic state, in a place where we just kind of turn a blind eye to kindness. We give a reason we won't do it. We'll give an excuse. We'll just remove ourselves. We'll pretend we, oh, we didn't see anything. I didn't know that was going on. And we give all of these excuses, yet all throughout Scripture, God, Jesus, Paul, John, all talk about the importance of us taking action to be kind. That's how important it is. Again, it's, it's not like something we, we kind of can push to the back and think it's not really important. At least I'm not cruel. No, but we're not kind. And Jesus isn't saying to us through Paul, hey, the fruit of the spirit is not to be cruel. I mean, if it was not to be cruel, we'd be okay. But the fruit that should be, should be characteristic of our life is meeting useful needs in God's way and God's timing with the right person. That's what he's calling us to do. So let's talk about removing apathy. This, this, these, I'm gonna give you a couple things and these might seem weird to you when you talk about kindness but I'm gonna kind of bring it all together uh, at the end in, a, in, about, in about 10 minutes. So let's get through these five things and then we'll, we'll, we'll wrap it up. Combating apathy. How do you combat apathy according to scripture? I mean, I can tell you just be more kind, but I want, it, I want it and I feel like God wants me to be kind from the inside out. 
to be a kind person that just emits kindness. So first one, first one is to pray for renewal. Pray for renewal, a renewal of your heart. One of the, one of the most potent pictures of the lack of kindness in scripture has to do with a hardened heart, a heart that is hardened against God, which will then translate into being a hardened heart against his people. And the, the best picture of this is in the book of Exodus, where Pharaoh had the hardened heart. And because the heart was hardened, it seemed like he was kind of in the middle, but he was moving towards this cruelty. And if we could somehow allow God to soften our hearts, and one of the best ways to do this is to pray for God to soften our hearts. This is David praying this prayer after he had one of the most tumultuous incidences in his life, one of the most painful things that he had created. If anyone could go into a hardened heart, not because of circumstances, because of his own failings, it was David. And one of the first things he did was go to God and say, God, create in me a clean heart. Get rid of all the angst. Get rid of all the failures. Get rid of all the baggage that I have. And some of us are going through life and we can't find kindness because the hardness of our heart has become so cemented through the pain that we've experienced in life that we need something miraculous to come in and we need God to come in with his chisel and hammer and break it away so that we can begin, we can begin to see people and to see their needs and to be softened so it moves us. It moves us towards compassion. It pushes us towards kindness. But we'll never get there if we have a hardened heart. And my, my suggestion to you and to myself is if you look at your heart and it's hardened, and you've got some things, you just, you're just not soft when it comes to your ability to connect with people. Why is that? I can tell you why it is for me. It's because of the failures in life that have bonded it together. That I have such issues with, with things that I know are gonna trigger me, that lock me up, that say to me, no, it's not worth it. But I need God, I need to pray to God, God, somehow, Take that chisel out, take that hammer out and soften my heart. Another thing is to be involved in active service, active service. James 2.14, this is a verse we referred to a bit ago where we talked about faith without works is dead. I just wanna express to you, if you are not serving, and I'm not, I'm not talking about formal serving, I'm talking about having a servant's heart if you haven't put yourself in a place where you are able to give to other people in some manner, in some manner, it's gonna be very hard for you to get out of that apathetic mode. It is so easy, so easy when you're not doing anything service-oriented to get comfortable, to get in a place where you feel as though it's, everything's okay. But that is a sliding towards the fact that you're removing yourself from kindness. Where? Do you serve someone? And when I say serve, I'm talking about out of the kindness of that soft heart. Not because you're paid to do it, not because it's got an expectation, but you know what I mean, don't you? You know what I mean when I talk about serving, serving out of the kindness of your heart. A third one is to get involved in spiritual disciplines. Spiritual disciplines. You know, what are spiritual disciplines? Because they don't sound fun. Well, spiritual disciplines are the things that, again, have an impact on who we are on the inside. Things like prayer, giving, worshiping, studying scripture, solitude, and the list can go on and on. When we discipline ourselves to put ourselves in that position where God has the ability then to come in and renew our hearts and to rejuvenate ourselves. It opens our eyes to the reality of the apathy that we're stuck in. And I have not met, I have not met anyone who has grabbed onto spiritual disciplines who does not emit kindness. On the other side of this, I know some people who have been cruel, cruel even in churches, have no business acting like they do inside of a church, much less even out in the world. 
And I can guarantee you that there is a strong correlation between the cruelty and the neglect of getting close to Christ. And spiritual disciplines are all designed to put you close to Christ. And the more we ignore that, the more we refuse to do that, the more this continues to grow in the apathetic world that we live in. And again, it is so powerful that I have seen in my life people who are just dripping with cruelty. Dripping with cruelty. There is always this connection to the fact that they refuse to discipline themselves and put themselves under the authority of spiritual disciplines. Another one. Another one is community involvement. We kind of hit this, but community involvement. Apathy is going to take hold in us if we are not part of a community. When we come to church, it's not just about checking off a list. It's not just about doing something that we know will get us God on our good side. Community involvement in a community is just that. It's being part of a community. It's allowing the people who are here, especially in the body of Christ, to build ourselves up, to build one another up, not to tear each other down. Community involvement enables us to see the needs at a personal level, to see one another in the hurts that you're dealing with, and to be able to act in kindness, to see kindness in action. Because you remember those people I told you at the beginning of the message where I look out and I know some of you are really kind? That inspires me to be more kind. And what we do when we come into community is we are able to lift each other up so that we're just not kind individuals, but we are a kind body of Christ that emits kindness. And then the last one here is seeking wisdom. Seeking wisdom, Proverbs 4, 7. And all of us, all of us, again, no matter where we are, have to have a constant desire, again, for wisdom. To be able to do Useful kindness in God's way and God's timing. Because again, this isn't random. Yeah, you're gonna do random things that are nice because you're a kind person, but the majority of our kindness, the majority of our kindness should be intentional. Intentional that when we see a need, we are there to be kind and meet the need. And the ultimate goal then is to be such a kind person that it propels us to be kind without even having any intentionality about it. So here's, some, here's five things, again, that key in on apathy. And you may say, well, if you do these things, how does this have anything to do with, with, with kindness? Because all five of these things are designed not just to make you nice to someone and make you less cruel, but they're all designed for you to be more like Christ. Because how powerful is kindness? I mean, how powerful is it? How powerful is kindness to you? Do you know that in the Bible it talks about Christ's kindness and God's kindness to you? And how that kindness is the cornerstone of our salvation. The fact that we do not serve an apathetic God just who exists in apathy. Not cruel, not benevolent, not cruel, not kind, but we serve a kind God. The characteristics of kindness, which pushed him, pushed him to see the need that you and I had that we didn't even realize we had. And out of his kindness, out of his gentleness, out of his forgiveness, out of his benevolence, he reached down and he provided a way so that we could be reconciled back to him. All because of his kindness, because of the characteristic of who he was. Imagine if we served a God who had no kindness. If there was no ability to connect back and to overcome the failures that we all have experienced. And yet we read about in in Ephesians how that it was because of his kindness that draws us to him. 
and our reconciliation to God, the reason that you can sit here today and know that you have a right relationship with God, it's ultimately because of his kindness towards you. Now, how powerful is kindness in your life then? If the power of kindness has the ability to reconcile you back to God, to bridge a gap that nobody could do, how powerful is it in your life? How powerful is kindness in your relationships and in my relationships? How much reconciliation could take place because of our kindness? Remember, God's kindness wasn't based upon the fact that, you know, we were a good catch. God's kindness was based upon his character. Our kindness to others is based upon our character, not based upon them. And imagine, imagine what would happen if instead of having the vindictiveness, imagine instead of having the malevolent heart or the unforgiving spirit or the indifference or the apathy towards that person We allowed Christ to be who he is in in us and to relate to that person in kindness. Possibly that relationship with that son, daughter, mother, father, coworker, friend, neighbor, Could it be that the same reconciliation power that reconciled us back to God could reconcile that person back to us? You may say, well, I don't really want to be reconciled. That's a place where you got to decide how important is kindness? How important it is for us to be the kind of person who emulates the character of Christ in our lives. And I know, I know I'm human too. Remember, I'm not talking to you, I'm talking with you. But those relationships are the most difficult to be kindness, to be kind to. And I'm not saying everything will be reconciled, I'm not saying because not everybody's reconciled to God. But we are called, we are called to be kind people. Imagine Imagine what it would be like even in this room, even in this room, if we prioritized, if we prioritized the characteristics of kindness to one another, if we were truly empathetic to one another, if we truly saw each other's needs, if we truly were forgiving, if we truly had that heart, that soft heart towards one another, imagine, imagine what a community that would be. Imagine how God would exist in this place, that people would be in awe of the fact that here's a community of people who aren't soft, they're kind. And they emulate the fruit of kindness. If you haven't received God's love, though, if you don't know what that kindness is, this is the most powerful thing you can experience in your world to be rightly related to God, to allow all of the garbage that you've experienced in your life and allow God to wash it away through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And if you haven't experienced this, I would encourage you when we're done here to seek somebody out and ask them about what that really means because that kindness, that kindness, if you hold on to it and you experience it to its depth, is going to propel you to be kind in your own life.